Hi. Have you ever wondered how a PCB is manufactured? One of these uh, standard double-sided PCBs that you take for granted these days. In this case, this is a, a PCB panel which contains 10 uh, individual PCBs. But if you wondered how they actually manufacture these at the factory, what equipment's used, what processes are used, and things like that. Now, you can actually make your own PCBs at home. It's not that hard, but they're not going to be anything like the quality you can get from a professional PCB manufacturer. They're so cheap these days, it's almost pointless making your own ones at home unless you absolutely need them in like one hour because you're not going to get the plated through holes, you're not going to get the solder mask, you're not going to get the uh, silk screen uh, component overlay, you're not going to get the nice gold flash uh, pads and everything else. You're not going to get the V score in, the route in and everything fantastic that you take for granted on one of these PCBs that you can get for $5 at one of these prototyping services if you wait uh, long enough, but they're so cheap these days. There's actually a lot of steps which goes into manufacturing a professional quality PCB like this one. So we'll take a look at it. Thanks to Richard Brady from uh, PCBZone.net for this uh, video of manufacturing, in this case, an old version of my microcurrent. The video you're going to see is uh, quite a few years old. I've had it in my archives for a long time. I've only just got around to editing this footage. Now, uh, PCB Zone have actually upgraded their factory and their uh, processes and technology since this uh, video was taken. But this video will be a typical example of how sort of, a, you know, your traditional PCB manufacturing process works. And before you watch this video, it's important to realize that this PCB uh, only has one plated through hole on it. All these other holes here are not plated through. And that's important, as you'll see in the video. In this case, it's actually a good example, this uh, pattern Panel because it combines uh, the routing paths like this with the V scoring, which is on the edges like that. You can see that. And I've done a video on actually uh, PCB design for manufacturer, and it's one of my most popular videos. It's almost approaching half a million views now. So click here if you want to have a look at that one. I highly recommend it. Anyway, let's get on with the show. Now the first step here is to actually uh, process the Gerber and drill files that you give them. Uh, and there's various ways that they do this depending on what uh, software they use, what uh, machines they have and everything else. So uh, I don't have any video on that. So we'll just uh, leave that and we'll go straight to generating the film. Now what you see here is the um, film uh, printing machine. I'm not sure what... Uh, model this puppy is and this is the film for all the photo imageable processes so uh, the copper layers top and bottom so you'll have a different film there you'll have top and bottom silk screen as well if you've got a photo imageable silk screen you may not the manufacturer may actually use an inkjet uh, type uh, silk screen silk screens an old uh, terminology when they actually used to use a silk screening process I don't think anyone uses that anymore inkjets are very proper popular now so it can direct uh, print onto PCBs. So we're actually going to see a photo imageable uh, silk screen or component overlay here today. It's a much better process than the uh, inkjet one. You can get much higher resolution but it's you know it's an additional uh, cost and additional steps uh, involved in here. And then of course we're going to have uh, films for the top and bottom solder mask as well. So we're going to end up with uh, six different films here for this one double sided PCB. But having said that, uh, circuit labs don't use this uh, technique anymore. Um, this is a somewhat older uh, one, but lots of places still <laughs> generate films, don't get me wrong. Um, they've got a new uh, laser direct imaging machine where they use a laser to scan directly and expose directly the uh, both the, like the copper mask, the solar lay, all those photo imageable processes all directly done and uh, with a laser and you can do away with the film. It's great. So just for completeness, I'll show you this video I found on YouTube uh, from the Alba PCB group. So uh, credit to them. And this is a um, Nuvogo 800 direct imaging um, machine. So they take a blank uh, double-sided PCB that is already uh, got the photo imageable uh, surface on it. They clean it uh, with an anti-static uh, roller just so there's no uh, charge on there. And then they uh, put it in the machine and line it all up and 
boom, it closes and then it takes, you know, 20, 30, 10 to 30 seconds, there you go, to actually uh, use the laser to scan over it and actually image the thing. So this does away with the film and here they are just doing the other side. So this does away with your traditional film process, putting the film over the top, lining it up and then exposing it to ultraviolet light. In this case, they're exposing it to a, presumably an ultraviolet uh, laser doing basically the same thing, but direct with laser. So you don't have to muck around with film. And the UV exposure coating that they've got on the PCB is called uh, dry film. So this would be like a, typically called a dry film uh, process. And uh, they'll show you the uh, stats here on the resolution they can get. It's pretty amazing. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves. Uh, we don't actually expose the board yet. Uh, we actually drill the plated through holes. So this is a uh, Exelon brand uh, machine, one of your traditional uh, machines, CNC machines to drill these holes. In fact, uh, uh, the um, Exelon uh, file format, um, a lot of PCB manufacturers will specify that. It just means the drill file, whatever, for whatever uh, brand. Um, CNC machine they use and you'll notice here it is it's picking up the tool there it picks up the different uh, size drill bits you'll notice that there's multiple panels in there stacked I'm not sure how many uh, maybe you know uh, uh, 10 or something like that stacked in I uh, know maybe five or something like that and they've taped them uh, down like that and then they're drilling them all at once it's just more efficient to drill multiple boards all at once and they would have uh, staked those down as well. And the reason why you would uh, stake or uh, pin them all together is so that those boards don't uh, slip in there and uh, get misaligned when they're uh, being drilled like that. And we'll see that shortly, here we go, we'll see that uh, they're taking them off and then they're removing it and then we can see them actually punching out the pins in this thing. And then of course they're just going to do a little bit of manual uh, deburring of the holes there. No worries. And then they're going to put it into an electrolysis bath where they do the uh, plated holes. So uh, you'll notice that uh, this panel doesn't have many um, holes in it. That's because I, my microcurrent just happens to not have many uh, plated through holes on it. It's just the one major one for the ground connection. That's why you only saw one. Uh, there's only like 10 major holes on this thing that they're actually uh, plating. You know, your average board would have most of the holes drilled. Um, at this point, you know, all of the uh, vias and everything else, they'd all be uh, get plated at this point. So they basically pass a very large uh, current through this, and I won't go into the electrolysis uh, technique, but there we go, 3.2 volts, 94 amps, there you go, thank you very much. But basically what it's doing is just uh, coating the inside of the hole with uh, copper so it, then it can connect uh, the top and bottom layers. And after a set amount of time, they take it out and bingo, we have plated through holes. Beautiful. Next up we have our dry film process. You'll notice that they uh, took them out of a baking oven there and they put them through these rollers where they've got this uh, UV um, sensitive dry film. Uh, it, it, this uh, back in the old days was done as like a wet uh, a wet process that actually you know get a squidgy out and roll it on but this modern dry film is uh, much better than this so they put it through there and bingo we've got the dry film applied to the both the top and bottom so now we can expose our board to uh, UV light and get our pattern on there. So now we take our photo resist coated board and then we accurately uh, align our film on top of this thing and we do that for both sides. And in this particular case they're doing uh, two different uh, panels, two different uh, sides at the same time. That'll just be an efficiency thing. So this is our uh, UV exposure machine. The co-light is it and give it a bit of a wiper dipe and we'll expose this sucker and you'll notice that a um, lot, lot of this video has like a yellowy tinge to it or some sort of tinge to it um, that's because the lights at this stage because these boards are UV sensitive they would have uh, special lights in the manufacturing facility that would not um, expose these boards. And in she goes into the machine, it'll expose it, you can see the light coming on and you don't need to expose it long at all. Um, it'll come out any second I'm sure because um, these are real high intensity UV uh, lamps. I can remember doing this, um, geez, a long time ago. We used like a big arc, UV arc flash lamp. I can't remember, like two big things came together and eh, and it was a pretty horrible process. This is much more controlled than that. But there you go, you don't expose them out for long. If you're exposing your own boards at home, like you might put them out in the full sun for 15 minutes, for example, but now um, this, uh, you know, much more higher intensity. Now they take the film off and you can see that the photoresist on there now 
has that exposed, this is a negative uh, photoresist, so it generates a negative image from the positive film there. Next up, we peel our dry film off. There we go. And we're going to whack this into the uh, developer machine. This is a big thing with uh, rollers and it's got uh, your developer uh, chemicals in there. And we'll eventually pop out the other side. This takes a bit. It goes through and it uh, develops it, then probably washes it and all that sort of jazz. Now you can see the size of the machine here and it's quite large. It'll eventually pop out of the developer here. Now this one's interesting. Not all manufacturers will do it like this, I believe. Uh, this is actually a negative photoresist, as you can see. So it's got the exposed pads in the copper. Now if you put this, if you're used to etching your boards at home, if you put usually after the exposure like this, you'd whack it directly into the etching. But in this case, look, we've got the exposed copper. It's a negative, so it wouldn't have uh, you just eat away all your circuit and you'd end up with a negative image board. So what they do now is they put it back into another, I'm not sure why they're putting it back into another um, copper um, electrolysis machine here, um, but they will then, they'll do that and then another step and then they will actually tin plate it. So interestingly, all of the uh, copper traces and your copper pads and everything else, your actual circuit layout will be all tin plated and then it goes into the etchant which eats away the copper. So yeah, this process looks to be like a total opposite to what you'd do at home. So here, after they've given it a wash, they will whack it into the uh, tin plate in electrolysis uh, bath here, and, and that will coat all of the uh, exposed copper there, top and bottom, uh, with tin. So that tin won't be eaten away in the etching. And bingo, look at that, our beautifully tin plated board. Awesome. And of course, you've got to wash it. Next up, it goes into our stripper solution and that uh, strips off all of our photo resist so that we're just left with our uh, tin plate and copper. And of course, we whack it into our etchant. There we go. Look, you can see all, oh, look, it's just blue everywhere. You can see that's a, a, a ammonia solution. So that'd be ammonia uh, persulfate. And it's just coated everything. I don't think there's any avoiding this. It looks horrible, but that's what happens manufacturing processes are messy and here we have it our beautifully fully etched PCB and with just the tin plate left isn't that fantastic and as I mentioned our uh, older processes might have done this a bit differently they would have uh, just uh, used that uh, positive photo resist and etched away the uh, copper there and then done a uh, roll tin painting uh, process over but roll uh, tin plate is pretty horrid and there's our completed boards with our plated through hole. You see the uh, large plated through hole there. You might be able to see it, but there's all our traces, uh, top and bottom. And now it's time to apply our photo imageable uh, solder mask. And you know how we talked about dry film last time and how you uh, could have a wet process with the squidgy? Well, the photo imageable solder mask in this case is a wet process like this. Um, so yeah, they just squidgy that across and in your color of your choice as well. I chose a uh, red solder mask. So they'll do that for top and bottom side of the board. And isn't it pretty? Oh, look at that. Bobby Dazzler. And now we have to expose our photo imageable solder mask. You guessed it with UV again. And you guessed it, we've got the film again. So they have to carefully align that on. They've got alignment marks and uh, holes for these things. So it's not as how you're doing as it looks. Um, and they do that, they will do that for uh, top and bottom of the board. And then they'll put it back in that uh, UV exposure uh, box and Bob's your uncle. And out she pops, all nicely UV exposed. Thank you very much. And of course our solder mask is uh, covering all of our uh, tin plated copper uh, traces and pads. So we've now UV exposed it. So now we put it into the developer machine. And if you're paying attention before, you would have noticed that it was a positive film that we uh, put over this and bingo, um, that's what we get out. It removes the solder mask from the places that we don't want it, i.e. the uh, pads, because well, components won't stick down to solder masks. That's the whole idea of it. It's to stop the solder bridging between all the pins. And next up is our component overlay, or what's often called uh, silk screen, although this is not a silk screening process. Once again, this is a photo imageable uh, process, just like we had uh, before. It's a wet process, so we get our, uh, we put our board in, and then we get our squidgy, and then we 
put the um, code in of our, uh, once again, photo imageable uh, component overlay material onto the board. In this case, I've uh, chosen a white overlay, but you can choose other uh, colors. And you'll notice that basically this is the third identical time we've done this. We apply, we uh, expose, and then we develop. In the first case, we did the uh, copper layers, and then we did the solder mask, and now we're doing the component overlay. Uh, the only uh, difference between these was that the uh, copper ones used a uh, dry film technique, but you can also use uh, dry film for the solder mask and for the component overlay as well. They just happen to use a wet process here. So basically three identical st processes like that for the three different components of a PCB, the copper, the solder mask, and the component overlay. And once again, we apply our uh, film on here, top and bottom uh, component or silk screen overlay. If you've got, uh, if you specify both uh, top and bottom, once again, they need to align those uh, accurately. Now, I mentioned before that you can actually do the component overlay as a like like an inkjet uh, inkjet printing machine and that's common on like low cost uh, prototype boards and stuff like that but it's not nearly as good a quality not nearly as accurate as a photo imageable process so if you're really after high quality silk screen that looks fantastic and has a lot of detail in it then uh, and is accurately aligned then you definitely want a photo imageable um, overlay process like that's used here and once again, we're going to expose that to the UV light and <laughs> quite frankly, getting a bit sick of exposing all these different layers. But hey, this is how what it takes to manufacture a PCB. And you guessed it, once we've exposed our component overlay, yep, we've got to develop it. <sighs> and we couldn't actually see the developer jets inside the other uh, processes, but uh, they've given us a good look inside here. You can see those jets going down. That could be water at the end, actually, rather than... Anyway, it'd go through uh, multiple steps where it would uh, add... It would spray the developer on, and then it would, uh, of course, uh, spray water on to clean it out because you want them to come out clean, ready to handle, and pass on to the next process. But here it is. Here's the beautiful photo uh, developed and uh, exposed photo imageable solder mask and it's fantastic and super accurate much better than that um, inkjet stuff but we're not done yet no <laughs> this um, interesting looking uh, vertical machine is actually a flying probe tester and uh, this is the electrical test part a lot of uh, this might be optional extra or it might be standard in in your uh, process when you get your board manufactured you might be uh, part of the cost and you can see they've got two separate probes there and they're going they're jumping all around the place and passing the current through to see if there's continuity and basically tests every uh, trace it takes your uh, Gerber file and it knows that this trace is this pad is supposed to connect to this pad down here and it goes and, and hun that's what's called a hundred percent electrical uh, testing usually they do it to a hundred percent you know you can What's the point doing 10%? So they go through and, and test every single trace like that. And yeah, it takes time. Um, often if you really want to save cost on the board, um, you can say, don't do the electrical test and we'll take the chances that they're, you know, that they've got a break in the trace and they're faulty or whatever like that. And, um, and the manufacturer will happily, you know, wipe their hands off it and say, okay, your responsibility. We didn't hundred percent test. You chose to save a bit of money because time is money and they have to put each board through this particular, each panel through this uh, process. So that costs money. And you can see that they're doing 150 milliamp uh, continuity tests there, but they also do an isolation test. In this case, uh, 64 volts, you could specify it. I don't know what uh, standard that is or whether or not that's just their own um, in-house thing, but I'm sure it could do uh, higher and could certainly do uh, lower than that. But they um, test the isolation between adjacent traces. And you thought our board was finished, didn't you? Well, nope. We've got another process. This is the uh, V grooving or V scoring. You'll notice that there's two blades in there. So they're actually doing um, uh, two uh, V grooves at the same time. There we go. And they just, yep, they're making sure it's lined up and then they push it all the way through like that. And this is why um, typically a manufacturer will tell you, oh, we can only V groove the entire length of the board because to sort of stop a bit of the way in, that's not very accurate. So typically they'll go, yep, we just V groove the whole thing and this is why. 
So there's uh, blades on both sides of the board there, so it creates a V on the top and a V on the bottom, and it just leaves a little uh, web in between, and this is how you can snap off uh, your boards. This is how they panelise them typically. Um, this is like a cheaper, easier process and, uh, and faster than uh, routing, which we'll see in a minute, because we're not done yet. We go back to our good old CNC machine because you remember we've only drilled the one, of the, well, just the plated through holes. What if you've got holes in your panel, which you typically might have tooling holes or other holes that are un. Plated. Well, they do these at the final step. Otherwise, uh, they would have gone through the electrolysis bath and they would have got plated. So here we go. We're punching out all of our uh, non-plated holes. And that, in the case of my microcurrent here, that's for all my uh, switches. And you'll notice that to save time, once again, they've stacked multiple uh, panels together up to, well, whatever your uh, drill and your drill bits are capable of. The, the bigger the stacks, then the more you're going to wear out your drill bits, etc. They'd be a, like a high-speed tungsten carbide uh, drill um, bits on them, but they go through drill bits. This is why you actually pay more for the more holes you get. And you might have encountered this on a prototype service. They might say, oh, maximum of 300 holes or 1,000 holes or something like that. Over that, hey, you need a, a, you know, a better quote and they'll uh, factor in not only the time to drill these things because as you saw it's not particularly quick um, but also because the drill bits are very expensive and they break them in you know with monotonous regularity or they just you know these wear out they have to change them all the time so really it you know it's an expensive and slow process so you'll pay per hole and you might have heard the uh, change in the noise there. Well, it's changed to now a routing bit, and now it's doing the routes in there, which I've specified in my on the mechanical layer of my PCB. Uh, a typical routing bit size, 2.4 millimeters. So my microcurrent board's actually a good example here, because you can see the V score in the V grooving on there combined with the uh, routing path like that so I've got nice clean edges on the side that's the advantage of routing is that it provides really nice clean sharp edges whereas V scoring when you snap those things off you're going to get a rough as guts edge with fiberglass hanging out etc so um, but I didn't want um, any to use any what's called mouse bites and I've done videos on this on how to panelize it's one of my more popular videos I'll link in down below um, so there's various techniques for holding a piece of B inside a panel so I've decided to mix V groove and routing here and what it's doing here now is actually routing out the final panel, which I specified. So there is like that wasted space all around the outside. They do that for uh, handling and alignment purposes. They've got alignment holes in. As we saw before, they have to stack the multiple panels and they need something. Um, the holes, which aren't in your panel, they will add that. So they, you will specify a particular panel size and that's what's being routed out here. But they need additional material handling material on the outside of that so if they had a, a, a predefined panel size you couldn't make your panel that big they'd go well you probably could but it'd be a special case where they go oh we have to add these uh, manual tooling holes and stuff like that and there's actually one uh, process which we didn't see in this video because this board and process uh, in particular did not have it, and that's the gold plating on the pads, which you'll uh, often either specify, especially if you're doing uh, BGAs and high-density uh, stuff like that. You really want uh, really controlled uh, flat surface pads, and gold is excellent for that, or you might have gold fingers or uh, you know something like that on a card edge. And they actually, uh, you might think that they do a uh, another plating process for that, um, electroplating process, but uh, it uses what's called an electroless, i.e. it doesn't uh, use an electrolysis uh, process, uh, hence the name electroless, uh, and it's gold over nickel, so they'll nickel uh, plate it first and then they'll put the gold over the top. Um, and here's a uh, Euro Circuits uh, video that uh, explains that, so full credit to them. And of course, uh, gold is expensive, it adds up, and so you wouldn't coat your entire board like that. So you'll do the solder mask uh, process first, and then you'll plate the gold just on the pads, because otherwise it'd cost a lot. Gold's not cheap. The copper component pads and holes have been left clear of solder mask. Now we apply a solderable surface finish to protect the copper until the components are soldered onto the board. On this line, we chemically deposit first nickel onto the copper and then a thin coating of gold over the nickel. 
This is a chemical process needing no electrical connections. The line is fully automated, moving the panels through a series of tanks which clean and sensitise the copper surface and then deposit about five microns of nickel and a tenth of a micron of gold. So I hope you enjoyed that and thank you very much to Richard Brady for shooting uh, this video as my microcurrent panel went through their old uh, factory. They do have a much newer one with uh, newer technology now. So head on over to uh, PCBZone.net to check them out. They're manufactured in New Zealand. Hi to all my New Zealand viewers. And if you're wondering how a multi-layer PCB is made, one with uh, four, six, eight, up to like 20 layers or whatever, um, it's basically the same as manufacturing a double-sided PCB, except they call these a uh, pre-preg and they're much, much thinner. And then they manufacture them as double-sided PCBs like this, uh, but they leave off the solder mask and uh, everything else. And then they just sandwich them, glue them uh, together as multiple layers. So two, four, six, eight. So they just manufacture them separately and then stack them up and then they do the final uh, solder mask and uh, silk screen on the outside. But it's basically um, the same way, just lots and lots of more steps. So I hope you like that video and appreciate what goes into that super ridiculously low cost double sided PCB that you're getting from one of these uh, modern prototype PCB manufacturers for basically bugger all cost. It almost costs more to post them these days than it costs to make it. There is a lot of steps and it doesn't get any easier than that. All those different processes, they still have to go through that. But of course the uh, prototype assembly uh, places have optimised their processes for you know getting the best uh, throughput and margin on multiple designs and uh, stuff like that. But anyway, I hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and comments and all that sort of jazz down below. Catch you next time. Hi. Previously I've done a video on uh, design for manufacturing your circuit board, i.e. how to mount it in a panel uh, such as this for production. And I'll link that in down below. It's been incredibly popular. So this is a kind of a follow-up to that in how to add some automated test functionality to your particular panel to help in testing your final product. This is something that I worked on a few years back and you'll see that on the edge of the product here, which is actually hidden, uh, normally hidden to the user by way of uh, you know, a mounting rail 